All right, we're going to start a dictation. Make sure you have this information in the upper right hand corner. Um, like I said, it's going to be two parts. The first part will be a dictation as usual. Part two, I'll give you instructions when we get to it. Okay, after the dictation part is over, I'll explain. Everybody ready? Number one, lag, lag. Look up when you're done. One again, lag. Number two, lack, lack. Look up when you're ready. Number two again, lack. Number three, test. Test. Number three again. Test. Number four. Pack. Pack. Number four again, pack. Number five, low, low. Number five again, low. Number six, wreck. Wreck. Number six again. Wreck. Number seven. Everybody look up. You get cues from my facial gestures. Number seven. Past. Past. Ready? If you're not ready, raise your hand or let me know. Number seven again is past. Number eight, lug, lug. Number eight again, lug. Number nine, paste, paste. Ready? Number nine again, paste. Number ten, late. Late. Number 10 again, late. <clears throat> Going through all of them, one, lag, two, lack, three, pest, four, pack, five, low, six, wreck, seven, past, eight, lug, nine, paste, 10, late. Okay? Part two now. I hope that you've copied these already. If you haven't, hurry up and copy them. All you need to do is put a number after each word indicating how many syllables it has. And the example that I'll give you is
How many syllables? How many? One. So all you have to do is write a number after it. Played is one syllable. For all of these words, just write a number after it very clearly how many syllables the word has. All clear? That shouldn't take you long, but make sure that you think before you write because a lot of Taiwan students have trouble with these. A lot of you, if you don't know the rules, you may get the wrong syllable count. Okay? All right, let's check our work. Everybody exchange papers now. The first one, actually it's almost correct, but it's Hua Shi Tian Zhu, I'm afraid. A little bit too much. What is the too much part? We don't need the F there. I can understand why you might do that because flag is a more familiar word than lag, is that right? Most people know flag, but a lot of people may not know lag. Lag means to fall behind, to lag behind. Luo is to lag behind. Luo wu. So for this one, it's almost right, just take off the F. Sometimes I give you a very short, simple word that is not very common. For example, number eight. I think that probably a lot of people don't know number eight. At least I haven't heard my students use this word very much. It's very short, but not common. Well, it's common enough for me, but not so much common, uh, not so common in English teaching, I think. Okay, number two, lack. Is it correct? Yes, good. Three, pest, correct? Yes, it is, good. Number four is what? Pack, is that correct? Yeah. And five, low, the spelling is correct. How about the IPA? No? Low. It's the right word, but the IPA is l o u. This is the correct answer. And I told you about KKO. We're going to write as o u. Low. So, ni ziu xie l o le hua jiu zhu. Okay, that's the KK way, but we're using this way. Okay? Then, number six. Six rec I will accept. This is not really a word, but it's okay because it's plausible. If it were a word, we would call it rec. So this is okay even though it's not a word. It should be W-R-E-C-K or R-E-C, which is short for recreation. Right, the rec room is the recreation room. <clears throat> recreation room. So R-E-C, W-R-E-C-K, I will also accept R-E-C-K. I'll put it in parentheses. It's not a word that I know of, but it's good enough. And R-E-C is good, correct. Seven, past is also correct. If you wrote P-A-S-S-E-D, that's also correct. They have the same pronunciation, past, past, okay? Seven is correct. Eight, very good, you got it right. Lug means to carry something heavy around. For example, all of you have to lug a lot of books around all day, is that right? You all have to lug, either on your back or carrying them, a lot of books around everywhere you go, lug. And this is correct, dao vi, right, we call that wedge. And number nine, paste. Paste is correct, both the spelling and the IPA. You could also write what? Besides P-A-S-T-E, we could also write P-A-C-E-D is also fine. Okay, paste. I paced myself so I didn't get too tired and I finished on time. And then the last one, late, L-A-T-E. And this is wrong IPA, should be A-E, remember. O-G-N A-E, ni-a-ja-e-ge, fu-hao. You need an it after that. For IPA. Okay? Any questions? Part B. For Part B, you need to know rules for adding ED endings. Now, if it ends with a voice sound, we just add D. So how do we pronounce this, everybody? How many syllables? Two. Correct answer is two, not three. All right, employed. It ends with a voiced sound that's not T or D, 
Well, T is not voiced. It ends with a voice sound. We just add a D sound. And then for this one, it ends with a T. So we add another syllable. We put a schwa in there. We say pitted. Pitted. How many syllables? That's correct. Three? Pleased. This is a Z and this is a D sound. One syllable. Four? Padded. How many syllables? Two because it's got a T. And then roared is one, correct? Six? Packed is one, correct, because this is voiceless. We just add a T sound here. Hissed, same. It's voiceless. We add a T sound, no extra syllable. Lagged, we add a, it's voice, so we add a D sound. How many syllables here? How do you pronounce it? Nodded, nodded is correct. And dabbed, it's not a D here. It's not a T or a D, so we don't add an extra syllable, dabbed. Dab means xia. To dab makeup on your face. Okay? This one gets a separate score. Each one is 10 points. So you have two separate scores. Each one, the maximum score is 100%. So count up this one 10, uh, 10 points for each correct answer. If you got them all right, it's 100. And then the first one you already know how to mark, same as usual. Any questions before we collect your dictations? Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to miss some of these. Of course, it should be the upside down R, but I'm not going to count this off yet because we haven't really formally gotten into IPA. It should be the upside down R, but don't count this wrong. Thank you. Yes. Both are okay, but in the future use this one. And sometimes I miss it. I think a lot of things, if it looks like spelling, I will sometimes miss them. Okay. Anything else? Other questions? Anybody? All right, quickly hand in your hand in your test. Unless you have a qu question, you have a question here. Go in, Dima. Mail. All right, go ahead, Sophie. I'm going to just tell you a number of things that I noted. A lot of you are still writing your eyes like this. You may think it's silly, but make sure that you are writing your eyes like this with a dot at the top. Eyes on means a dot, not a hang. No matter the spelling. 或者 IPA 上面是一點,不要寫一行. A lot of people are still doing that. I know it's habit. We call that force of habit. So if you're doing something that you know you should change, and then someone says, well, why'd you do that? You can just say force of habit. Ah, 習慣啊. Everybody, that's a really good thing to know, because we're talking a lot about habits and changing habits. Force of habit. Ah, 是被習慣逼的. Force of habit. Another one, let me ask you quickly, what is the difference between these two symbols? I hope you can see. This one and this one. What is the difference? Quickly. What's the difference? In American English, there's a bigger difference in British English, but not so much difference in American. But what is the difference? The position of That's true, actually. This one is really central, but in American English, this one's almost the same. You're right about that. This is a central vowel. It's right in the middle. Not front, not back, not high, not low. It's right in the middle. That's true. But there's another difference between the two. Can this one ever be stressed? Not in American English. At least according to the conventions we use for transcribing American English. If it's stressed, we use which symbol? This one. 有重音,就是用這個。有的沒有重音,還是用這個. For example, umbrella. Umbrella, that's an unstressed uh. 可是很多字像 lemon, lemon, nigga uh. Unstressed, neutral vowel, it's this symbol. So this is always unstressed in our conventions for transcribing American English. When you learn other languages and when you're doing, for example, um, Chinese linguistics, stress But this is the way we're using it now. In American English, these sound very, very similar. So up, lemon, hanjin. In British English, they're quite different. Uh is still uh. 
But this sound is more like ah. For example, cup, a cup of tea, cup, cup. It's more like ah in British English. In American, they're very close. Okay, so if it's an unstressed syllable, use this one. Or shouldn't say it that way. This one is always unstressed. If you see this, it must be in an unstressed syllable. You guys are sure. Not every unstressed vowel is a schwa. Also, is it a neural vowel? Yang yin is a neural vowel, ma? Neural? Shen jin yuan de mu yin, ma? Yang yin. Yang is the yang de yang. Yang yin. That's a schwa. Is it a neural vowel? Is it a shen jin yuan de vowel, ma? What's missing? T, neutral, is it's neutral vowel, is yang yin, shua. We call it a shua. Okay? That's a reduced vowel. That's another way to say it, a reduced vowel. Again, only in unstressed syllables. What else did I find in your notes here? Oh. What's computational linguistics in Chinese? No, what is it? We didn't give you the Chinese, right? It should be what? How do you say compute in Chinese? That's it. Jamie, you look incredulous. Jamie, is computer, right? 计算机 is computer. We call it 计算语言学, computational linguistics. Um, another one. 那个纯恶劣, how do we say that in English? How do you spell it? 不是悬崖, 不是cliff, it's a cleft. Cleft means cut in two or split into two. Cleft. Just a fen kai lia kai de yi, a cleft palate. Another one is, how do you pronounce this word? We're writing all over the place, excuse me. It's a good zaman yeah. All right, so keep in mind, of, what's the of or of? It's of, of. That's the only time that we use F for V in English, as far as I know. In English spelling, that's the only case when F is pronounced as a V. Okay, spelling me, man. F means with V, zero zero zero, as far as I know. Um, a mechanical issue. Always use for regular spelling for text. Use Times New Roman. You Times New Roman. Twelve points. PT points is the size of Times New Roman, For IPA symbols, everybody note this. Lucida, sans. This is a French word, but we still say the S. Sans, Unicode. Unicode means that no matter what the operating system is that you're using, even if you're using an Arabic operating system, Everything will still, still come out correctly. Lucida sans Unicode. Use this for IPA symbols. Sorry, Alex, here, can you see? All right? Lucida sans Unicode for IPA symbols. Don't use anything else. 一般的文字就用 Times New Roman. Those are point. Um, another thing. OK, some pronunciation issues that we found. What were some of the biggest problems that we noted so far? I'm going to erase some of this because it's getting a little bit long. When you've identified a, pro a problem, you take the responsibility to work on it yourself because a lot of people have trouble, especially with these sounds. We will practice some in class, but really the responsibility is yours because we can never do enough in class. For example, the difference between eh and eh. What is the difference? There's a difference of length in American English. Both of them, in theory, are short vowels, but this one's shorter in actual length. They're both short. But this one is shorter. 
eh, eh. For example, pet, pet. This one is longer, pat, pet, pat. Does it sound longer? Can you hear it? Pet, pat, pet, pat, pet, pat. Can you hear that it's longer? Yes, you should be able to. The length differences are very small, but relatively there is still quite a difference. If you're paying attention. The other thing is your tongue is higher for this one, your tongue is lower. Since your tongue is lower for pat, your whole jaw goes down. Pet, pat, pet, pat, pet, pat. Usually, this is my experience, these two vowels are among the most difficult for Taiwanese to get exactly right. However, this one they have no trouble with. Pat is very so, why don't you start from the one that you're good at? Because all you have to do is open your mouth about as wide as you can and make it long. Everybody, pat. 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 Now this time, don't open it so wide and make the vowel shorter. Pet. 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 Pat. Pat. Pet. Pet. To my ears right now, everything sounds great. Can you hear the difference? Please remember it. Many of you need to work on it because in my experience, Taiwanese students really have trouble with these. Even after practice, some of them still don't hear the difference well. But usually, eh, 比较少错,就是eh的时候,not-sure. So when you're not sure, 就当作是eh,很确定就是eh. Really, 这样子的话,就是淘汰了一个,只剩下一个. So, pet, pat. Pat, you usually don't make mistakes. That one's easier. Mouth wide open and longer. One other big, oh, let's stick with vowels first. Another set of vowels we have trouble with is eh, eh, a. We're going to add an eh, it's the same thing. a, it's also a problem. So, pet, pat, pate. Pate is ding. Ah, uh, toe ding is pate. This is your pate. So, if you're having trouble with these, and especially because of Taiwan English, they often say, what's your nam, etc. Tack instead of take. A is yaozuida. Another quick thing. Everybody pay attention to this. This is, this is easy to fix if you're paying attention. How do you write the last sound in this word in IPA? How do you write the last sound? Short ima. I want you to listen to the way I say it and tell me if it's short or long. Happy. Happy. I'm very happy. It's long. You hear it immediately, right? Now, every time you've heard this word by an, spoken by a native speaker, I think about 100% of the time, by an American, 英式它有它的变化,英式有它的规则,而且是在变。but we're talking about American English now. It should be about 100% of the time it's happy. Nobody says happy. I'm very happy today. I'm sorry, it sounds funny to you too. Now you, you write i because that's what you were taught in school. And Kenyan and Nat had a reason for that. Is that right? Happy. happy. I'm very happy. All right. That won't happen. Because it's unstressed, so he used an i. It's not happy in American, it's happy. So everybody pay attention now. Not i. Okay? Got that? That goes in your notes. And remember that for future dictations, etc. This is e, not i. Happy sounds really funny to an American. For British, especially if you're older, it might be okay. Um, this is about format. I'm sorry if it's not too organized. I just took down notes when I was reading your notes. Remember for gua hao, gua hao nei is biao kong ge, gua hao wai yao kong ge. Everybody pay attention to this. This is really, really important basic formatting. Some of you put a space. Okay? Okay? 
uh, that's too close. In how nay mei you space, in how wai you space. All right, please watch that. It really, it's man si yan, when I see that wrong. All right, and how to mark stress. Nya biao zhong yin. In school, you learned, for example, lucida. We'll erase that. Sans, unico. Niman shui xiao shui is zi. It's kind of hard to see this. This is also used in IPA, but we're going to have a lot of quizzes where you have to indicate stress syllables. So, one way, there are two ways to do it. You can either underline, da zi de hua bi jiao fang bian, ke hua di xian, lucida, sans, unicode, ke yi. Or you can circle, so xie, chen qi lai wen qing zhu, lucida, sans, you, actually just the you, unicode. Okay? So, indicating stress, woman jiao zi liang zong fang fa, yi ge hua di xian, lu gu si da zi, na ru gu so xie de hua, jiao hua chen chen. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. It's time to continue our text reading. Let's go. Page 10. Yes. Ah, happy. All right, one more time, everybody. Happy or city, any word at all that ends in Y in English. Just about, as far as I know, it's any word, unless it's a Y, Lai Yun is very strange. Or messy. Silly. All right, all of those, ending in Y, all of them. The reason that KK, that Kenyan and Nats, the reason Kenyan and, not Nats, it's not. The reason Kenyan and not used a short I is because all of these Ys are stressed or unstressed. Unstressed, right? He thought that an unstressed E sound is going to be very short. But the reason we, or what this represents, is not just shortness of time, not just duration. quality. Remember, what are the three ways that sounds can differ in? Loudness, pitch, Quality, all right. They don't talk about length here, but these two differ in quality. For this one, the tongue is high, happy, e e e e s and the e. For this one, the tongue is lower, e e e. Are those two different sounds? Yes or no? E in English, not Chinese. Now in Chinese, they're not really. They don't have different meaning. But they are still different sounds. And in English, e, for example, peak, i, pick. Are those two different sounds? Yes, absolutely two different sounds. Now we're not talking about how long it is in time. We're not talking about duration. Happy, happy. Does that sound like e or sound e or i or the i? Happy. It sounds like e, doesn't it? Therefore, which one should we use? This one. Did that explain it, Wendy? Right, but now一个字如果是unstressed的话,我们就要换另外一个符号。可是它刚好只有针对Y,为什么那么有偏见?它为什么偏好这个Y,或者歧视它?其他的那个if, for example, incredible, incredible, that's an it, or re, repeat, okay,好了, repeat. That is actually an E. So whatever it is, we're listening to the quality. Therefore, we should use E. OK, did that, did that make sense this time? OK, anybody else before we go on? I know it takes time, but I really want everything to be clear and everything to be accurate. All right. Let's go on in our text, please. We're on page 10, second paragraph. I don't think we finished last time. Did we? Sign 
go. In order to form consonants, the air stream through the vocal tract must be ob obstructed in some way. Very good, except for a couple things I'm going to point out. We don't say consonants in American English. We say ka. Everybody ka. Wang ka da ka. Okay, consonants. Consonants. So one day, one of you said, "He said, 'A, this mu yin yin, 没事，用的很少，是不是？像 father.' 不对哦，用的并不少。只要是 spelling 有 o， 很多都是。比方说 spot 点，斑点 spot。音是是 spot， 美是是 spot， 用的就是这个 r 的音。So when you see an o， 然后念的不是 o， 那剩下的音就是 r 而不是 o。Saying o actually is okay for some varieties of American English， but we're going to be try to be consistent with the Midwestern variety。So it's con con consonant。That's number one。Number two， 呃，气流。How do we say that？ Airstream, no stress on steam, a stream. Sorry, and the the next part is must be obstructed in some way. Remember, in class we said the difference between vowels and consonants is that with consonants, what there is some kind of obstruction. That's right. So this sentence is telling you that's the difference with consonants. 某一个地方有一点被阻断或者有阻碍 Okay, go on. Hmm. Consonants can be classified according to the place and manner of this obstruction. All right, this is very, very important. We're going to have two different parameters. Parameter is 参数 parameter, P-A-R-A-M-E-T-E-R, -E -E、parameter. 两个不同的参数，一个是发音点，发音的部位。Okay, 发音发音点，发音的地方。That's the first one. The place of articulation, 就是比方说是两个嘴唇合在一起 or 舌尖顶上齿龈 That's place of articulation. 告诉你哪个器官碰到哪个器官 That's place of articulation. The second one is manner of articulation. It says manner of the obstruction, but here we're just going to call it by its full name, its usual name. Place of articulation. Manner of articulation. 第一个是点，发音点。第二个是发音方式，是什么方式 ？We've talked already about place of articulation when we introduce the parts of the vocal tract on that mid-sagittal figure of the head. We're going to learn more about manner this time. We're going to start off again with place, and then we'll get to manner. Okay? So those are two different parameters we're looking at. The place. And then what we're doing at that place? So, 完全堵住了吗？还是很接近吗？还是有一点接近，可是不是非常接近。主要就是这样子。Okay, let's go on. The primary articulators, articu, articu letters, mm -hmm. that can cause an not cause. How do we say it? Cause. Cause. Good for you. Good. Cause. Uh, the primary articulators. They can cause an obstruction in most languages. Are the leaps not leaps? Leaps are 跳跃 right? L e a p s leaps. What should they be? Everybody, fix this in your brain. We're going to use this word. I don't know how many hundreds of times in this class. Lips, because after the tongue, they're among the most important articulators. I 短的 I lips. Everyone lips. Okay, 跳跃 leaps. 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 嘴唇 lips, okay, lips, the lips. Are the lips the tongue tip and the and blood? Mm -hmm. And okay, 注意母音 tongue tip 复合词 tip 是短的 i tongue tip. Everyone tongue tip. The tongue tip and blade. The tongue tip and blade. A 不是 blood 也不是 blood. Blood 是流的血 Blade. 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 Okay, the tongue tip and blade. The tongue tip and blade. Sing the little song. The tongue tip and blade. Everyone. The tongue tip and blade. Yeah. Good. Read it again. The tongue tip and blade. Good. Blade. Blade. We're not done yet. Blade. Mm -hmm. And the back of the tongue. 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 Right. Good. 
Speech gestures using the lips are lips, called lips. lips. Uh -huh. Using the lips are called labial articulations. Labial articulations. Because articulations are repeated. To repeat, we will not put a tone. We want to make the opposite places more obvious. So are called labial articulations. Are called labial articulations. Another one is it using or using? The first or the second? Using with a Z. 动词是 use， 名词是 use. Can you think of other examples where the noun is voiceless and the verb is voiced? Can you think of other examples? I can think of two offhand. How about 给人家住宿，跟房子 How do you say 房子 House. 然后动词是提供住宿 House. For example, this building houses our institute. Ah, 我们的研究所就在这一栋建筑物里 Okay, house, house. Another one that's kind of fun is what are these things here? Teeth. Now, when babies are just starting to grow teeth, the teeth are kind of coming out of their gums. 他们一直在啃东西 That's called to teeth. T e e t h 加 e. 那是小就是小 baby 一直在啃东西，因为在出牙 Teeth, teeth. 所以有好多的 pairs. 名词是无声，动词是有声。So teeth, teeth, use, use, house, house. There are there are a lot of other ones. Okay, go on. And those using the black, the back of the tongue, are called. Oh, sorry. 哎，中间。嗯哼。Those using the tip or blade of the tongue. Again, blade. Blade. Yeah, good. Of of the tongue, tongue, tongue mm -hmm. are called coronal articulations. Okay, that's very holy, but we say coronal, coronal, yeah. Mm -hmm. Coronal actually sounds fine, but we say coronal. At least I do, coronal. Yeah, and coronal has to do with crown, ding, right? And those using the back of the are called dorsal articulations. All right, watch out here. We have three terms dividing the tongue up, or articulations, not just the tongue, into three general areas of the vocal tract. 如果是 labial, what does it include? Ones that use the lips, for example, p, b, m, and b. So what do you get here? You get 注音符号 Let's just recite 注音符号 Go. B, p, m, f are all labial articulations. So now you understand why 注音符号 is arranged the way it is. 它有它的道理 So, 这一整套的头一组啊，就是 labial. B, p, m, f. Um. Then we have coronal. And how about in 注音符号 What do we have next? D, t, n, l. Those are all coronal. 舌尖、舌前、舌叶，通通都包括在 coronal 里面。And then we have dorsal. And what do we have next in 注音符号 ？g, k, h. Those are all dorsal. They use the back of the tongue. They're in the back of the vocal tract. So that's an easy way to remember them. B, p, m, f are Labial, d, t, n, l are coronal, and g, k, h are dorsal. Now, these terms are not usually used very much in phonetics, but they are used a lot in a related field called what's the field closest to us in phonetics? Phonology. In phonology, we want a very clean, 非常的 spare, 非常 economical. 希望是越来越经济越好，越节省越好的一个系统。So if we don't have to say, for example, b, p, m, f, in phonetics we'll say bilabial, 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 labial dental. 因为牙齿在你那个里面，我们要讲的很明确。可是，在 phonology 可能是这四个有很多共同点，可以变得笼统，通通放一组，放在同一个组里面。Understand? So for phonologists, rather, they just like if 
刚好有一些可能细节不太一样，可是行为有一些像的地方，放在同一组里面，然后给他挂一个名称。That's what these are for. They're mainly for phonologists. The problem is when we use them in phonetics. If I say, well, that's a bilabial. I'm sorry, that's a labial sound. Do we know if it is an M or an F? 我们能区别吗 No. So these are not detailed enough for phonetics. They're not very useful in phonetics. Sometimes we may use them occasionally, but they're mainly for phonology. They're not detailed enough for phonetics. Everybody understand that? I know the bell rang, but let's try to get through the next paragraph, and then we'll take a break. Okay, next reader, please. Okay. If we do not need to specify the place of articulation in great details, detail, mm -hmm. detail, right, and the articulators、mm -hmm. for the consonants of English and of many other languages, languages, languages、mm -hmm. can be described using these terms. Okay, you read beautifully, but I'm going to be really picky. If we do not need, not 后面是一个 stop， 不是 not need， it's not need. Everyone. All right. And there's a little trick I showed the freshman English students this morning. Maybe I told you before, but you can feel it in your tummy. Not. 这里会紧紧的，因为在憋气 Because you're holding in the air. Not need. You can even see it. Not need. Not. <laughs> 看得到吗？ All right. You should be able to feel it. Touch your tummy. Not need. Not 紧紧的 need. 放松啊 Everybody, try it. Touch your tummy. Not need. Can you feel it? Not need. All right. Let's do it the wrong way. Not need. Not need. Anything happening down there? No. Okay. Nothing that we're interested in. So not need. You guys are not need. The second thing is described. 后面是有声 ，i 要长一点。I'm being very, very picky. Actually, you read beautifully. Described, Stanley. Described. Described. Yeah, that's good. Continue. The words, topic, for example, begin with a coronal consonant. In the middle, in the middle, it's a labial consonant. A labial consonant. Consonant、uh, 重复的 so we don't have to stress it. Okay. Okay. Labial consonant. Right. And at the end, the dorsal consonant. Beautiful. Good. Look at look.、Mm -hmm. uh, check mm -hmm. check mm -hmm. check list by feeling that. Feeling. Everybody watch that long e. Feeling. E. Feel.、Yep. Oh. Checking list by.、Mm -hmm. Once、oh. more, boost checking. Oh. Uh, check this by. Feeling、mm -hmm. that the tips of the what the tips、mm, not the tips not 不是复数 oh tip right or blade、mm -hmm. of your tongue right is raised for the first coronal consonant、mm -hmm. your lips closed for the second labial consonant good. And the back of your tongue is raised for the final dorsal consonant. Very good. All right. And then the next paragraph, it's going to say, we've got names for these different articulations. We've got classifications, but they're not very fine-grained, 并不细 so they're not good enough for phoneticians. All right. Very good. Let's take a break. Couple of questions that came up during the break. I'll try to go over them quickly, and let's get right back to our text. Uh, first of all, I guess they didn't write it very clearly. Let's try again. First of all, and a lot of now I won't say a lot this time. Today it was two people, but accumulated over time, many people asked this question, and it's a good question. You learn two different kind of A's, two different kinds of A's when you learn the KK system. Is that right? But nobody ever tells you why we have two different A's. Is that right? So I will tell you today. If it is just a Danyuan in And the word for Danyuan in in English is monophthong. You can tell by the funny spelling, P H, T H, 连续啊，很奇怪一大堆这个子音。But we pronounce this as one sound. This is a f and this is a th. Monophthong. That's the word for 单母音 or 单元音单元音 
单母音单元音同一个东西 In Chinese linguistics, we often use 元旦,元气,元音 for vowel So 母音, I will probably start saying 元音 more often And consonant, you learn 子音 But I will probably start saying 辅音 more often 辅人大学的辅,一个车,那个辅 So, 元音 is 母音, 辅音 is 子音 单元音是单母音的意思,那只有一个母音 we call it 复元音,重复的复,复元音 That's a diphthong, monophthong danyuan yin, is called a D-I-P-H-T-H-U来了 Diphthong,这是双母音或复元音 We use this one for monophthongs. Dan in the shahal. This is the symbol that we use. It's ah, father, ta, etc. That's ah. When we are going to represent a diphthong, and there are only two we need to worry about, I and what? Ow. Those are the two diphthongs in English. The, main, the diphthongs in English are the same as in Mandarin, except we add oi. So, I, a, ao, o, jaiga oi. They're very easy to remember in English because they're the same as in Mandarin. They're longer, but they're the same, they have the same composition. Jiaxiaiga oi. Hayo ling waiga. Yiga yo han te su di zong. Let's use xie xian bi jia hao. Ha bi jia te su de di wei ling waiga si yu, like in cute. Okay? So, I, A, O, O, OI, U, those are the diphthongs in English. So, as I was saying, Damu in the Shaho, or Dan Yuan in the Shaho, we use this symbol, Ah, Father. But if it is a diphthong, either I or Ao, we use this symbol. And the reason is because, Shaho the Wei Zi, Zai Damu in the Shaho, so Hung Ho Mian, Fa, Ah, 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 the Quail Twin Shai Chi, Father, Father. But, for I and ao, so the way is a bit more It's I and ao. It's not so deep, it's not so deep. So the way is a So father, I, ao. So the way is a bit more deep. So we use a different symbol to remind us that it's, the tongue is in a different place. Okay, can you? Does that satisfy you, the explanation? That's the reason. The next thing is, I still don't get the difference between these two words. There are two differences between these words. First of all, this sound is voiceless s. And in this word, it is a voice z. This is the first difference. Okay? Raised? Raised. Raised? Raised. The second difference is, and this is because of a universal rule in English and in probably most of the languages of the world. This vowel is affected by whether the next sound, the consonant that comes after it, is voiced or voiceless, right? If it's voiced, this is going to be shorter or longer. If it's, I'm sorry, if it's unvoiced, let's start with voiceless. If it's voiceless, the vowel will be shorter or longer. Shorter, and if it's voiced, it will be longer. So let's just put it up on the board again. Sai pao is raced. Short and voiceless. Yang da is ray, and here we have the length mark raised, voiced with a longer vowel. Raised, raised. So two big differences. One is voiceless, the other is voiced. The second difference is one is not so long, the other one's quite long. The one is the second one is longer. 双母音天生的就是长的 So I don't want to call this really short Raised is relatively short if we compare it to raised But A is longer than, for example, I 它比单母音通常比较长因为双母音是两个母音在一起同一个音节里面的两个母音都在一起 That's a diphthong 所以你把两个母音都在一起的话 它一定有它的长度,所以双母音天生就是比较长 But if the next sound is voiced, 它会更长 Everyone got that? All makes, that makes sense, right? So raised be, for example, wrist, 手腕 还要再长 Wrist, 
Rest A 会比记比较长，比 rest 长。But if there's a voice sound after it, then it's even longer. Raised, 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 raised. Third question. Okay, Jamie was saying, why did we mark this in her notes? 打了一个红圈。T O 上面有一横 and then N. She says, but I found this in the dictionary online. You will find this in a dictionary like Merriam-Webster. Almost any American published dictionary will have a very, very strange set of pronunciation symbols. 非常的奇怪 I told you there's a lot of weird things about countries who are powerful and think that they can do whatever they want, right? This is another example. 美国就我行我素 That's what it is. Everybody else in the world is using IPA. Women 从小用一个非常讲究的系统 And the really funny thing about it is, 每一本字典都不一样，不是每一本，每每每一个 volume， 不是每个 volume， 应该说每个 edition， 每个不同公司出的那个字典，它用的系统都不一样。因为它就是随便讲究，它设计一个，它高兴，它就这样出来了。This is a system that is similar to what we used when we were in grade school. 小学一二年级，我们用这个来区别。For example, oops.、Uh, for example, not, note. 这个是所谓的 short vowel， 所谓的 long vowel. Short vowel， 我们用这个 breve， 这个符号叫 breve. Breve 是很短。Note 叫 macron. 我们用这些 diacritical marks， 额外的一些符号来标它的。它是哪一个母音 ？Not note。可是 IPA 的话，就会跟这个不一样。这个根本就是一个 R， 这个是一个 O， 一个双母音。So 这完全是另外一个理念，是顺着我们的拼音系统来创立一个非常讲究的一个音标。So if you use an American published dictionary, please don't use the 音标。Use the sound files and then check. A British dictionary, all right, because they usually use IPA. And I found one just recently that's very good. Now Jamie says, "Well, what dictionary can I use online?" This is 我最近才刚找到的，因为以前没有那么好的、那么完整的英式的字典是免费的。以前有，可是都是付费的。这个是免费的 ，Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary online. 这个现在是免费的。And they give you the IPA. So if you need the IPA, and you're looking online, use this. Longman's Dictionary of Contemporary American English, or whatever it is. Use that one too if you're using a 纸本，好像线上的也可以用，也现在也变免费的。So avoid U.S. dictionaries if you want the IPA symbols. Ad hoc. This is a Latin expression that means 将就，是将就的一个系统，随便凑的。他们他们一定会抗议说，我才我们才不随便呐、啊，我们才不不是凑的，我们想了很久。可是他为什么不用 IPA 呢？对不对？他就是不用 IPA。美国人对 IPA 会有点，我也会有点恐惧感。会 ，because they don't learn it. So if you've had foreign teachers before, like when you went to a 补习班 ，I bet nobody knew KK 音标 ，right？ 你们以前的外国外籍老师是不是全部都不会 KK 音标？应该都不会。Unless they studied linguistics, then they might know it. I think that's all. Any other questions? Anything else? I really appreciate your questions. If you feel more comfortable telling me during break, that's fine. But、um, please do ask them. Let's continue. These terms, however,、mm -hmm. okay. Remember, everybody, the continuation rise. However, how do we say it in a on a word like however? These terms, however,、uh -huh. these terms, however, terms, these terms, however, these terms, however, these terms, however, good to do not specify articulatory gestures. Articulatory gestures. This is 一起的，不要分哈。Articulatory gestures in sufficient detail for many phonetic purposes. 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 Right. Don't be sloppy with the P's. The T's do funny things, but the P's behave themselves. Themselves. So watch the P's. Also, this is what I just said. If we're doing phonetics, these are too complicated. They are not very useful. 
Um, you know, uh, okay, read quickly. Let's try to get through it fast because, you know, we need to catch up and also you know a lot of this stuff. So let's go. We need to know more than which articulator is... Hmm? Articulate. Articulator. Articulator. Right. Is making the gesture, which is what the, the terms labial, co coronal, and dorsal tell, tell us. We also need to know what part of the upper vocal tract is involved. All right. What is the criticism that they are, that they are uh, advancing here? What is their criticism? These terms only tell you about which articulator? The, not only the place, that's true, but what else does it only tell you about? What's the key word I'm after? Upper, exactly. So those three terms only tell you about the lower articulatory tract, which is the active or passive part. Active or passive? Active, the tongue. They're mainly talking about the tongue, the active articulator, the tongue. And then it says they, we also need to know, and it didn't tell us, which part of the upper vocal tract or what the passive articulator is. And that's funny, too, that in English, we usually tell you what? For example, this sound is alveolar. This sound is palatal. This sound is velar. So, in yong the term, which half do they tell you about? The upper or lower vocal tract? Alveolar, palatal, velar. Is that upper or lower vocal tract? Upper. Is it active or passive? Good. Now, let's look at the Chinese. Did they tell us about the upper or lower? So each one has only half the story, right? If we put them together, There's another example of that. parallel. In English, in literature, when we're talking about the passage of time, we often talk about how many summers and how many winters have gone by. But in Chinese, you like to talk about so it's true, in Chinese literature, and that's true this in this case, in phonetics. Okay, keep going. Specific places of Articulation mm. or indicate articulation. Articulation. Yeah, articulator, but articulation. Articulation are indicated by the arrows going from. But not arrows. I say arrows. A arrows. Yeah, the kongqin get air. Arrows going from one of the low, uh, the lower articulators to one of the upper articulators. Upper articulators, chongfu. Upper, the upper articulators in figure 1.7 because there are so many possibilities in the coronal region. Coronal region? Coronal region. This area is shown in more detail at the right of the figure. 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 Not fi, fi. Figure. 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 Yeah. yeah. The principal terms for the particular types of obstruction required in the in, not in, in in required in the description of English are as follows. All right. So he's contrasting what in Figure One Point Seven? He's contrasting two different things: the figure on the left and the figure on the right. And which one does he say is better for phoneticians? Which one do we want to use as phoneticians? Phonologists can use the one on the left most of the time and be happy. But phoneticians need the one on the right. We need more detail. Because look, so the tip of the tongue can touch the teeth, it's dental, can touch the alveolar ridge, then it's alveolar. 
and it can also be retroflex. This has not been learned. This today you should learn. It can also be palato alveolar. That is the palatal and palatal position. So all of those in phonology can be called. 我刚列举的那么多的发音的那个位置啊 ，in phonology can all be called coronal, right? All of those are coronal. But in phonetics, how many names do we have? 我们要细分为多少个东西 ？They list four of them here, right? 有四个，而且这四个是完全不一样的。So all they do is they just kind of let you know some of the different ways of Uh, classifying the data between phonology and phonetics. The phonologists have their reason for doing it. This is not aligned with our needs. All right. Next, by Lei Biao. A name first, please. Oh, I'm Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. J. Uh, by Lei Biao. Okay. Meant with two lips. By means two. Lei Biao means lips. All right. Say words such as pi, by, my. And note that how the、嗯、没有 that and note how the lips come together. 好的 lips 重一点。How the lips come together for the first sound in each of these words.、Mm -hmm. These words. These. Watch this. In Taiwan English, it's often these words. These words. It should be these words. These words. Long e, voice z, and words z 字典的字 Everyone, these words. These words. Beautiful. Good. These words.、Mm -hmm. Find a comparable set of words with bilabial sound at the end. Good. All right. I don't say comparable. Many people do. It's okay, but I say comparable. Comparable. 我觉得比较好。可是 comparable 很多人会讲。In addition, watch out bilabial, not bilabial. Bilabial. All right. So bilabial includes which sounds? Remember, you're doing fu hao, and then you will get them. B, p, m. Not f. That's not bilabial, because bi means two. These sounds involve both lips. 双唇，中文是双唇音。Okay, next. Next reader, yeah. Amy, labial dental. Labial dental. La labial dental. Right. Lower lip and upper front teeth.、Mm -hmm. Most people, when saying such、uh, saying words such as bi and bi, raise the lower lip until it nearly touches the upper front teeth. Okay, let's just quickly make sure we know what these words mean. Phi is a word from Shakespeare's generation, from Shakespeare's time. Phi means what? Phi means terrible. It's just 表示很不满，很生气。这个东西很糟。Phi, this is awful. And vi means 竞争，比较竞争。Okay. And most people, when they're saying words like phi and vi, they raise. Okay, everybody, watch for a minute. When they say these words, they raise the lower lip until it nearly touches the upper front teeth. Watch, everybody, watch. Bye, 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 bye. Now it's labial dental, lips plus teeth. Upper what? Upper teeth, lower. How about if we reverse them? Would that work? Try to. <laughs> That's right, Annie. Exactly, exactly. Let's try. Bye, bye. Is it possible? We can do it. Does it sound almost the same? The vowel sounds different, but the consonant phi vi. We can still hear foot and the right. Phi vi. It looks pretty weird, and it looks pretty weird not only to us as speakers of Chinese and English, but as far as I know, and I believe as far as Latifugut Fogut knew, and he looked at hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of languages. It does not occur in any language of the world. No language uses phi and vi. <laughs> 没有这个东西 It's perfectly possible. It's 可以可是有点麻烦就是 It's not used in any language at all. So, it's upper teeth, lower lip. Let's go on. Next reader. I'm sorry, the 长短有点不一致啊 Next. Um, dental. Tongue tips or blade and upper front teeth. Say the words. These. What is it?、Uh, I'm not sure how to say. T H I G H. 大腿 If you like chicken, this is a useful word. Yeah, chicken leg and the 
那个大鸡腿还包括另外一节，对不对 ？That's the thigh. Yeah, thigh. Is it voiced or voiceless at the beginning? Voiceless. Thigh. You can't hear it even with the microphone very well. Thigh. Thigh. 吐舌头 And the second one is. That one is voiced, and we don't use that word except in poetry or when we're being sarcastic and silly. When you're being silly in Chinese, do you sometimes talk with a Pekingese accent? 这有时候好玩，要装个北京腔，对不对？好玩，对不对？就是好玩，啊 ，OK。你上哪儿去啊？就是好玩。We do that with British English. 我们有时候讲英式腔就是好玩，开个玩笑。Or we use older English words that are no longer used in modern English. And for example,、um, thou hast not brought thy book over here yet. <laughs> 很好玩，我们就是好玩。Sometimes I've seen it recently online. 我个朋友很喜欢装那个腔。Okay, 他就是很喜欢那些古古古老的东西。He will do it a lot. I've seen it many times. So. We do it for fun. This word is still useful, actually. Okay, but don't use it in your everyday conversations. <laughs> thigh, 大腿 Thigh, your, 你的 This is 所有个 Go on. Some people, most speakers of American English, American, 清楚一点 American, am, mm -hmm. oh, as spoken in the Midwest and on the West Coast,、mm -hmm. have the tip of the tongue protruding. Tip of the tongue. Tip of the tongue,、mm -hmm. protruding between the upper and lower front teeth. Others, most speakers of British English, have it close behind the upper front teeth. Both sounds are normal in English, and both may be called dental. Called, not called. cold. Cold is very cold. It's not the air conditioning is not that high. Okay. Cold. Called. Called. We're gonna use a Midwestern accent here. Called, not cold. Called.、Mm -hmm. If a distinction is needed. Sounds needed. In, needed. Sounds in which the tongue protrudes. Tongue. Tongue.、Mm -hmm. Tongue protrudes between. Protrudes. Protrudes between the teeth may be called interdental. <laughs> All right. Everybody, notice that word and put it in your notes because we're not going to say just dental for the th sounds in English. Th and th. We're now saying that the tongue is called interdental because we're often going to refer to Mandarin and. In English, d and t are mostly alveolar. That's how we classify them. 齿音，舌尖会顶到你的齿音。But how about d t n l in Chinese? I want all of you to make those sounds and tell me if your tongue tip is touching the back of your upper teeth. 试试看。d 有没有碰到上排牙齿的后面 ？Most speakers of Chinese of Mandarin, 对他们来说，呃，对你们来说。This is dental. 会碰到牙齿就是 dental. Okay. So when we say dental, it will get confusing if we don't use a different word for th and the, because you don't have th and the in Mandarin, right? So th and the we will call interdental. That means 齿间音，牙齿中间的间啊，齿间音 ，and 齿音，这是两两个不同的 dental 的种类。中文的 d t 呢，碰到牙齿就是 dental。英文的 t 跟 z， we're going to call it interdental. That way we'll keep it straight. 都都可以吗？都清楚吗 ？All right.、Um, I think I'm going to start reading it myself to save time. I want to get through all the places of articulation. So everybody, please try to stay awake.、Uh, and I'm going to try to rush through some of these because we know most of this stuff already. You just need to know some details. That was dental. Remember, from now on we call it interdental. Interdental. Dental we'll use for sounds like Chinese. All right. Four is alveolar. 齿音就是齿音 in Chinese. Tongue tip or blade and the alveolar ridge. 舌尖或舌叶会碰到齿音，那就是 alveolar. In English, d, t, n, and l are all alveolar. Again, there are two possibilities. Oh, by the way.、Um, Dental, 有一点没有讲完 It says here that in English, especially Americans like to stick out their tongue and say th and th, with about half of your half a centimeter of your tongue stick, sticking out. Is that right? 就是舌尖大概有半公分是露在牙齿外面 right? 
It says this is mostly American and that most Brits will say a th with your tongue behind your teeth. Th, 不需要读出来。也可以 ，but I told you I have this British friend. We've been pretty good friends for 16 years. And when I told him this, he got all excited. He said, "Oh no!" He said, "We stick out our tongues too." So. 很多英国人就怀疑 Ladderfolk 的这一句。我也问过他，他还在世的时候。And he said he has data. He did a survey, and he's certainly right. However, the Brits who I asked tend to have their tongue sticking out. So this is just my opinion that I'm giving you, and the opinion of my British friend who speaks really beautiful British English. 他是伦敦一代的，蛮纯的那个 RP. So he's saying that Americans tend to stick out their tongues. Brits tend not to. But some Brits will question that. All right. Now, next is alveolar. As I said, it's either the tongue tip or blade touching the alveolar ridge. And you can say tie dye, nice eye, zeal, lie using the tip of the tongue or the blade. Alveolar is active or passive articulator. Passive, right? Now, 另外要搭配一个 active. Now, is the active the tip or the blade of the tongue? Could be either one. Either one is fine. It depends on the person. I think I use the tip. All right. You may use the tip of the tongue, or for some of them, and the blade for others. 不同的字可能用，有的用 tip， 有的用 blade， 不一定。Mm. Some people pronounce s with the tongue tip behind the lower teeth. So when a lot of people say s, is the tip of your tongue touching your lower teeth, the back of your lower teeth? S, mine is. So, 尖会顶到下排牙齿的后面 Okay. Others have the tongue tip up for us. 别人呢跟他们不一样，可能是舌尖会翘起来，比较长朝上，所以都可能 Feel how you normally make the alveolar consonants in each of these words. This is directed toward native speakers, but even as second language learners, you can see what you're doing. 检查一下你自己用的是哪一种 Okay. And then try to make them the other way. So I usually have my tongue down. I would try to make it with the tongue up. That's okay for me too. So tongue pointing down, tongue point, tongue pointing up. Those are both possible. Just note what you do, just so you're aware of it. And a good way to appreciate the difference is to say ten and tenth. All right. Now watch my tongue here. When I say ten, is my tongue sticking out? Ten, no. 可是因为后面有 th, my tongue will get ready to make that th, and it's going to stick out early. It's going to stick out before it's time. It's only up to the end, but it's already going to be sticking out to get ready for the end. So watch, ten, 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 ten. 后面有 th 的时候，舌头会提早吐出来，所以 n 就变成 interdental， 受到它的影响。This is called assimilation, 也叫做 coarticulation. 中文叫同化，受到前面后面的音，某一个音会变，那个就是同化。同学的同，同化，也有异化，那个叫 dissimilation。现在不讲没关系。嗯、um, ， which is further back? Ten, tenth. 当然是 ten 比较后面， tenth 比较前面。All right, retroflex. 中文常常常翻作卷舌或者翘舌 right? 教育部说翘舌 is that right? 念对了吗？对，是翘翘舌对不对？怎么念的 ？I don't use this word often, so that's why I'm not sure. So 翘舌 there is a special definition of retroflex. Retroflex means that the tip of the tongue is curled back. 就是往回转，往回折。So, er, er 是舌头本来应该是平的，可是它的下面的那个面积会朝上。Er, er. 其实北京话的 retroflex 比较明显，英文的我比较没有那么 retroflex， 我比较没有这样子卷回来、折回来。So, 儿子，儿子用北京腔出来，儿子舌头有没有这样子折回来？舌头的下面的面积，舌尖的下面的面积会折回来，会朝上，靠近阴颚。That's retroflex. Everybody understand? 考试会考
Ah, everybody starts writing whenever I say that, always. Okay, better than not writing at all, so. That's called retroflex, zhuan shou or tiao shou. Um, there's two different ways to make the R, two basically, two different basic ways to make the R in American. So, there's a name for that. We call it a bunched tongue. B U N C H is a bunched, bunched tongue. I use bunched tongue. I use retroflex. Bunched tongue is very common. Both are okay. Okay? Um, it says that many speakers of English do not use these retroflex sounds at all, but some speakers begin words such as ry, ro, re with retroflex sounds. Note the position of the tip of your tongue in these words. Okay, so everybody ry, try ry. Which one is it? Is it flat or is it curled back? Curled back, okay, then that's a retroflex. If it's flat but tight, that's bunched. I use a bunched tongue. Note the position of the tip of your tongue. Speakers who pronounce R at the ends of words may also have retroflex sounds with the tip of the tongue raised in ire, our, air. Like Americans, like Irish people, certain parts of England, they pronounce R's after the vowel. But in standard British English that's spoken in London in that area, they don't pronounce R's after a vowel. And I'll give you the word for this. You go and it's called rhotic. Rho is a Shila Zimu R. Rho. It's like a P. It's just a R. Rhotic is the R. It's 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 So, do I speak a rhotic dialect or a non rhotic dialect of English? I speak a rhotic dialect. My R's are pretty strong. Not everybody in America uses a rhotic dialect. As I mentioned, many parts of New England, New York, and the South are not rhotic, or they are sometimes rhotic and sometimes not. And according to what I've read, many of them came back with a non-rhotic accent. People claim that that's why Many southern accents do not have R's after vowels. They don't pronounce their R's after vowels. You're in some wrong way. I'm not sure, but that's what I've read. Okay, so rhotic means R. Non-rhotic is like标准音式. Okay? Palato alveolar. For these, we can also call them post alveolar. Palato alveolar. Post ho, so yin ho the yin is yang the. Which which sounds go into this category? Sh, zh, sh, zh, 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 Those are palatal alveolar. And please remember pa, ba ba, pa. Because ye yo ling wai zong yin si alveolo palatal. Isn't that confusing? But just remember, ying wen is ba ba, p a, palatal alveolar. Now, alveolopalatal is this enough? This is useful to you too. And also, if you know Polish, it's ji, qi, xi. Write it down, this is useful. Palato alveolar is the Yingwen, the sh, zh, zh. But alveolopalatal, by that, like, the dialogue, the dialogue, the that's Zhongwen, the Guoyu, the Putonghua, the ji, qi, xi. Ji, qi, xi is the alveolopalatal. So now you know what to call them. All right, so it says here that it's used in words like shy, she, show, during the consonants, the tip of your tongue may be down behind the lower teeth. Or up near the alveolar ridge. Was a kaojin chiyin do kei. But the blade of the tongue is always close to the back part of the alveolar ridge. Chiyin ho, just your that shaye kaojin's place. Shaye kaojin chiyin ho's place. 
That's typical of palatoalveolar sounds, sh and zh. And these sounds are made farther back in the mouth than s, as in si, si, so. So everybody say si. Si. Feel what your tongue is doing. So he'll say, gamma, zai na li, si. Now try shy. Alternate between the two and feel how your tongue is moving. Sai, shy, sai, shy. What is your tongue doing when you say shy? Is it going forward or backward? Backward, backward that's right. Okay, so that's the palato alveolar area. Got it? Um, it says that they can also be called post alveolar, as I said. You can pronounce them with a tip or blade. And try to say ship shape with your, the blade of your tongue, and then try it with the tip of your tongue. So, blade first, ship shape. Try it. Ship shape. Now try it with the tip of your tongue. Ship shape. Ship shape. Blade. Ship shape. Tip. Ship shape. They sound almost the same. You can hear a different vowel, a slightly different vowel, but both are okay. And we have to hurry up now. Let's finish all the places of articulation. You're responsible for reading this over yourself. Palatal, there's only one palatal sound. Everybody remember this. It's easy to remember. Palatal, there's only one, and it's written with a J. Y. Y. Right? Um, say the word you slowly so you can feel the consonant at the beginning. Everybody, you. Diga in just the palatal consonant that we're talking about. It begins with the front of the tongue raised toward the hard palate. So that's a palatal sound. And if you try to hold it, and then if you suck in, how do we know it's palatal? Everybody say the y of you, just the y part. Everybody y. All right, put your tongue in that position. And then when you're sucking in air, I want you to notice which part of your tongue feels cold. So, can everybody feel which part of your tongue is cold? That is the area we're talking about to make a palatal. So we can finish velar. The bell is just ringing. So the velar, velar sounds are made with the back of the tongue, 舌后, and the soft palate, 软腭, 两个, 或者靠近, 或者接, uh, the consonants that have the place of articulation farthest back in English. He says in English, For example, listen, this is a velar sound. Ka. Ka. Now this is a sound that's further back. Ka. Ka. What part of the vocal tract am I using for that second sound? Ka. That's velar. Ka. Ah, what do you think I'm using? Think of that picture of the vocal tract. What's behind the soft palate, or what's beyond the, the soft palate? The uvula. Those are uvular sounds. Because we're talking about English. English does not strictly have uvular sounds, but actually some speakers do have uvular sounds. It's uvular. And we hear them at the beginning of, for example, can and go, can go. Those are velar sounds. At the end of a word, we hear them at hack, hag, hang. So, k, g, and ng. Where can ng occur in English words? The NG sound. Where can we have the NG sound? At the end of a word. Can we put ng at the beginning of a word in English? Can we say ngo? Ma. Yes. Does that work in English? No. We can only have those sounds at the end of a word. Okay, there's always exceptions. I'll explain another day. And it says that the back of the tongue is raised to touch the velum. That's where we'll stop. That was the bell. So, uh, next reader is who? All right, you start next time with the next paragraph. Everybody mark that. Any questions before you run? Any questions? No questions? Very good. We'll see you on Monday.